How's it going everyone? Welcome to the channel. In today's video, I'll show you how to make bread with a hydration of 100% that's equal parts flour and water. Let's go to the kitchen and check it out. This bread has been on my baking list forever, but I'm so glad I finally tried to make it and it's a total success when you just look at that texture. The best part is that after watching this video, you will also be able to make this. I mean, just stop and think. 100% hydration that's equal parts flour and water Normally that would be a recipe for a batter, not a bread. And what makes it even better is that there's no kneading involved. So it's unbelievably easy to make and the result is amazing. Trust me, after making it once, you'll be weighing out your ingredients for the next batch. Now there are a few things that we'll need to make this happen. You'll need a baking tray, but not for baking, it's for fermenting. We'll also need a bowl, scales, a dough scraper and a temperature probe. This stuff must be handled very gently. So I'm going to use my pizza peel to place it in the oven. You can also use a completely flat tray, like a cookie sheet. And in order to slide it in, we'll also need a piece of parchment paper. But the most important piece of equipment is a solid base to bake this bread on. A pizza steel or a pizza stone is a must. Without it, you may not get a good oven spring. Now as for the ingredients, you'll need some high protein bread flour, yeast, salt, olive oil and some water. By high protein flour, I mean 13% or more. Since this is no need bread, the temperature control measures are a little bit different. My kitchen is around 21 degrees, so I want my water to be around 27. If you want to learn more about temperature control, check out the principles of baking playlist. Also, if you can't get your hands on high protein flour, I will soon publish a video about using vital wheat gluten to strengthen your flour. And that will also be in the principles of baking playlist. In fact, you can find many useful videos there. So check it out after you watch this one. Okay, so to make the dough, grab a large bowl, add the water, the yeast and the salt. Give it all good mix to dissolve the salt and hydrate yeast, only then add the flour. And no, salt does not kill yeast, you can mix them together safely, it has no effect on it. I will bust that old myth in an upcoming video. Once you have added the flour, mix the dough well. You should mix it for at least a minute. This will not only ensure that there's no lumps, but also develop some gluten strength in the dough. A little bit of gluten development from the get-go is always welcome. Now because we're not kneading this dough, we must have some method of building strength into it. And that will be achieved by a series of folds. And this is where the baking tray comes in. Pour the oil into it and spread it out evenly. The oil serves two purposes. At first, it will prevent the dough from sticking to the tray. But as we perform the folds, the oil will get absorbed into the dough, making it richer. So what you want to do now is take the dough and pour it into the tray. Note how loose and runny it is at the moment. You wouldn't think that we can make bread from this. I think the wettest white wheat flour dough that I've ever made was around 85% hydration and I was already pushing it. This is on another level. There is a Spanish bread called pan de cristal, or crystal bread, which is pretty much made this way. Let's check the temperature real quick. 25 degrees is what I was aiming for, and 25 degrees is what I got. If your dough is warmer, it will ferment more rapidly. If it's cooler, it will take longer. It will also greatly depend on the temperature of your kitchen. I'll cover it up and leave it for 20 minutes. Now we can perform the first fold. And the first fold will be different from the other folds. We're only trying to bring the dough together, so wet your hand with some water, grab the dough by the corner and fold it over the middle. It'll be very loose and sticky, but just keep going around the circle and folding it. You want to go around at least two or three times, basically until you start feeling some resistance. And once it starts becoming a little bit difficult to stretch and fold, it's ready. It should be able to keep its shape, for a little bit at least. Now we're going to cover it up and leave it for another 20 minutes. Now it's going to spread out again, and that's totally normal, because we're just getting started. We'll continue with coil folds. Wet your hands again, grab the dough by the middle, release it from the tray, lift it up and roll it forwards. It's called a coil fold for an obvious reason. We are rolling the dough underneath itself. We're going to do this on all sides. Once you have rolled it a few times, turn the tray around and repeat on the other side. If your hands start sticking again, just wet them with some water. And once it's nice and tight on this side, you can turn the dough 90 degrees and repeat the folds again. Remember just half an hour ago, this was basically a batter. And now it's turning into a nice dough, all thanks to a few folds. The power of folding during bulk fermentation can't be underestimated. I've always said how important it is, not just for a bread like this one. And if you want to learn more about folding, check out the steps of baking playlist on my channel. Right, so once your dough ball is nice and tight, well, as tight as it can get, cover it up, leave it to rest for another 20 minutes. It will of course spread out again, but that's fine. We're going to do more folds. And now you'll really feel the difference. Earlier, when I was picking it up by the middle, it would tear easily. Now it's nice and stretchy and elastic. Saying that, each subsequent fold 
should be formed a little bit more gently than the previous one. As the dough is rising and fermenting, it's accumulating gas inside of it. And you don't want to handle it too roughly and knock that gas out. So whilst you want to fold it nice and tight, you still want to do it with a light touch. So we're going to cover it up again and give it another 20 minutes. And we'll fold it once again. This will be the final fold, so we'll fast forward through it. After the final fold, you want to cover it and leave it to ferment for one hour. It should puff up and pretty much fill the tray. This will be the tricky part of the whole process. Now we need to shape this into two loaves. Well, I say shape, we just need to cut this in half. It's just that the stickiness makes it extra challenging. If you ever made ciabatta before, this process will be very familiar to you. You want a thick dusting of flour. I'm using a tray to minimize the mess to clean up later on. Flip the dough out in one smooth motion without any hesitation. Place it on the flour, then tap the tray gently and remove it. It should release easily. If you see the dough spreading out and touching the sides of the tray, dust it with flour. You don't want it sticking to anything and dust the whole surface of it generously. Try and make it as straight as you can. Square, rectangle, doesn't really matter. As long as it's nice and even. Remember, whenever you're handling a sticky dough like this, you want to have a light touch and quick hands. Okay, now we can cut this in half. And again, don't hesitate. Cut right down to the tray and do it quickly. If you stop, the dough will stick to the scraper. And as soon as you've cut it all the way, take some flour and dust the cuts so they don't stick back together. Use more flour than you think you need. It's better to be safe than sorry here. Now we can transfer the dough to the nonstick paper. As you lift it, push it together and carry it over. As you lay it down, stretch it out again. Once you've laid it down on the paper, just organize it it's nice and straight. You must leave quite a large gap between them, otherwise they'll stick together. I would say at least five centimeters or two inches. Okay, so if you have gotten this far, you're pretty much done. The difficult part is definitely over. All that is left is giving them a good dusting of flour and leaving them for the final proof. And we're not going to cover them, otherwise, you know, stickiness. An hour to an hour and a half should do it. If yours is taking longer, then leave it for longer. If it's fermenting rapidly, then bake it sooner. During the final hour of fermentation, preheat your oven, 230 degrees Celsius, fan off. And that is 445 degrees Fahrenheit. And look at them, they're puffed up beautifully. Now they're ready for the oven. Now gently pick them up and carry them over. Do not rush this step. You don't want to distort them or deflate them. Slide the loaves on a preheated hot surface and bake for around 20 minutes. Check the bottom of the loaves. If it's not fully baked, then flip them over and bake for another 3 minutes or so. And there you have it, a 100% hydration loaf. It is like a giant airy ciabatta. It is truly amazing. For one, just because it works, but the bread itself is so nice. With a nice crispy crust and a super moist and airy interior. I really encourage you to try this. You'll be surprised. So what do you think this recipe? What's the highest hydration bread you've ever made? Let me know down in the comments. If you want to see more videos like this one, click over here. Subscribe to the channel, click right here. But that's all I have for you today. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.